So, you've come to hear me tell a story, have you? If you please, we would love to hear one of your stories. You have seen so much. You have lived so long. Oh, <laughs> so good of you to remind me of my age, child. No, don't worry. I am an old woman, but I've lived a long and fulfilling life, and I do have stories to tell. Which story would you like to hear? A true one. A true story. All my stories are true, child. There are enough fairy tales in the worlds already. There's no need for me to make up more, believe me. Tell us the story of the balance, then. <laughs> you want the story of the balance? Oh, that's a long story, child. And not one I'd venture to tell at this hour. But perhaps I could tell you a story that I heard a long time ago. A story that became a crucial turning point in the history of the balance. And that set in motion wheels that to this day are still turning. Please, yes, that does sound like a story we'd like to hear. Very well. This story, like all good stories, begins where it ends. In a tower. In a realm that is no more. Tell me I'm dreaming again. You know, for once, just once, it would be nice to have a decent night's sleep without waking up screaming from a bad dream at 4 a.m. Postcard pretty. 
There's a storm heading this way. Even the weather sucks in my dreams. I feel so charmed. It's a pristine and picture-perfect dawn. I'm in my undies. That's so not appropriate. What's happening? Oh, perfect. I guess if I don't do something to save that egg, I'll suffer seven years of bad karma or something. Fresh mountain water. Back in the real world, they'd probably charge 15 bucks a bottle for this. Something happened to this rock quite recently, and it probably altered the course of the stream. Hey, maybe that's why the tree's dying. I'm an artist, not a botanist, but I'm pretty certain this tree is dead. Or close to it. It's a nest, padded with large scales, very large scales. For some strange reason, I have a feeling I should get the hell out of here before the tenants return. This is interesting. I've never seen a scale this size before. I'll keep it as a souvenir. It's as dry as a bone. It'd probably snap right off in a second. The suffering we must endure. What? Why do you take such pleasure in torturing us? Torturing you? Who are you? We are the voice of all trees, the spirit of wood and leaf. You're a talking tree? No, a tree does not talk. At least not in your tongue. The tongue of trees is the language of wood, root, and leaf. Who are you, then? Like we said, we are the voice of all trees. Whenever an injustice is done, we must speak for the tree if we are present. It's the branch. I shouldn't have broken the branch off. Oh, what does it matter, anyway? There is nothing more to be done for us. We are simply here to provide comfort in the final passing to Earth. We? I only see one of you. We are one with our host, as we are all one spirit, but legion. Yeah, uh, thanks for clearing that up. We do not expect you to understand. You are human. What happened to the tree? Oh, the pain. As the battle raged, we... Battle? Between the mother and black chaos. She was only protecting her child, but it would not back down. And the force of their battle shook the mountain. The brook that fed us was led astray, and without water, we began to wither and die. What's the deal with the egg? Egg? What egg? Oh, of course, the child. Whenever the mother was absent, we were entrusted with the safety of the child. But now, withered and without strength, we can do nothing to help. We have failed the mother, and we despair. Our shame knows no bounds. Who are you again? We are the Wood Spirit. We come to all trees in the hour of great need to provide comfort and aid in the passing to Earth and to give a voice to those who suffer. 
Our time is running out as we speak. The passing to Earth is about to begin. Leave us now. What about the egg? Oh, it is too late. Without sustenance, we do not have the strength to bring it safely home. We have failed. And the Earth will know our shame for all time to come. Isn't there anything I can do to help? Oh, we do not expect a human to come to our aid. Lose the attitude, okay? Just tell me if there's anything I can do. It is futile. We need water, but there is none. Not after the brook changed course. I'll find a way. Don't panic. We do not panic. Unlike you, we accept our destiny. If, however, against all odds, you do succeed, we will carry the child safely back into its nest. Do not make a foolish attempt on your own. It would spell certain misery. I'm an artist, not a botanist, but I... I think I just made a funnel. Cool! I'm so proud of myself. This should do the trick. Neat. My arts and crafts teacher would be so very proud of me. Hello? Hello? Leave us be. Are you okay? We find our strength returned, and so we have no time for idle conversation. We must drink and rejoice. Aren't we forgetting something? Hush, listen. The song of ancient wood. Is it not sweet? Sweet, definitely. Yeah, the baby's probably ready to boogie down as well. The baby. Oh, the egg. Thank the earth. We almost forgot. Uh-oh. that Uh-oh It is you. You have come. You know me? April, daughter. I have been waiting for you. Waiting why? Because it begins here with you. As it always has. What do you mean? The breach and the mending. The pain and the joy. The end of the old and the dawn of the new. A different world. I am the mother of what is. But you, you are the mother of a future that may yet be. How will I know? How will I know what to do? I will guide you. And I will protect you as much as I can. But in the end, you are on your own. I'm afraid. You always were, my child, my daughter. This is probably not a good thing.
exhausted. I must have been tossing and turning all night. So hot in here, too. No wonder I keep having these weird dreams. I've basically been simmering in my own sweat every night this past week. Doesn't look like it's gonna cool down anytime soon, either. It's another sunny day in Newport. Well, it's a good thing the studio's got proper air conditioning. I promised myself I was gonna spend most of the day working, and I don't intend to break that promise. Not this time. Nice view, if you're into brickwork. It's a rubber ducky, hopelessly trapped under that rusty old grill. I still haven't figured out what runs through the canals in Venice, but I'm sure it can't be water. It's a seagull. Poor guy looks quite hungry. I still haven't figured out what runs through the canals in Venice, but I don't know what that chain's for. But it's connected to some kind of mechanism at the bottom of the canal. It's Constable Guybrush, my toy mon- Oh, ape. He doesn't much like being called monkey. I could only carry one suitcase with me when I left home. There was so much I would have loved to bring, but c'est la vie. At least it was a clean break with my past. I guess when all my hard work starts paying off, I'll get a house and fill it with all kinds of new junk. The past. Who needs it? That's my desk, so, theoretically, that's where I'm supposed to do my work. I think my muse has departed me for greener pastures, though, because lately... Inspiration's been fleeting at best. That fan is supposed to keep the room nice and cool in the summer. Sure, yeah, it's at least, oh, one quarter of a degree cooler in here when it's on. My on-again, off-again diary. We've had a turbulent relationship, her and I. Dear diary, note to self. Dreams of talking trees and dragons aside, it's still no excuse for talking to inanimate matter in the real world. So quit it! It's a picture of me and my friends. I'm part of the should-be-reading-more-but-life's too short generation. We embrace our illiteracy. The last book I read was How to Seduce the Man of Your Dreams. Now, if I can just find a man to dream about, I'll be all set. I'd better head over to the studio to do some work. Only two weeks until the big show opens, and my contribution is in serious need of attention. Might be a good idea to get dressed first, though. Hey, babe. Babe, you're looking real sexy today. Zach, listen, I I've got to run, and... What's going on, April? How you been? I don't really have time to hang around. Then how about hanging out with me tonight? A few raptures, some hot dancing. Ah, uh, did I tell you I got a VIP pass to the pavilion? Those things are hard to come by, babe. No, that's not gonna work, Zack. What? You got something against me, babe? Do I offend you in some way? Oh, no. I just don't think it's a good idea for us to be... together like that. Hey, whatever. You come crawling back when you realize your mistake, babe. I'm out of here. What an asshole. Organic plastic. It grows, and it converts carbon dioxide into oxygen, just like real plants, but it doesn't need nourishment of any kind. Convenient, but disturbing.
It's a fact, as in F-A-C-T, Free Access Terminal. Computer. Voice interface is not installed. Please use the touchscreen interface to communicate with this free access terminal. Oh, okay. Why not consider a very reasonable upgrade? In addition to a voice interface, true holo display technology and Instacredit compatibility. No, I'll just use my hands, thanks. You are missing out on a great opportunity. If you upgrade now... Hold on. You understood that. You have a voice interface installed already. Why would I pay to have another one installed? Current voice interface is for sales purposes only. If you take advantage of this very affordable upgrade today... No, really. You... This terminal doesn't belong to me. Noted. Please refrain from voice communication in the future or you will be reported to the fact FUB and charged for processing time. FUB? Fair Use Bureau. They are authorized to carry deadly arms. Well, whatever. Sorry. Nuh uh I'm not knocking on that door unless it's absolutely necessary, and frankly, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Pizza and movie night, Monday, July 31st, BYOS. I'm sorry, but big sweaty jocks do not turn me on. I'll take a nerd any day. Annual summer blowout at the Fringe Cafe, Friday, August 4th, 8 p.m. Free food, live performances by Royne Dale, Harlequin Masquerade, The Go-Getters. Tickets available at the bar, $10 only, spread the word. Common Room, Duty Roster, July 27th, April and Emma. Oh, joy, manual labor, my favorite. San Francisco. I'd love to go there someday. Someday soon, hopefully. I can't tell what that note's saying as long as it's up there. Fiona's handwriting is not particularly legible. Found. A gold ring under the common room sofa. If it's yours, let me know. But no false claims, please. Fiona. I did lose a gold ring a few weeks ago. I hope this is the one. I'll have to ask Fiona about it. It's a matchbook. Morning, Fiona. Good morning, darling. You're up early. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Are you feeling all right? You look a little pale. I just have a lot of work to do. For the exhibition. How's that going, darling? Good. Fine. It's going. Actually. It's not going so well. I haven't felt inspired in a long time. Weeks. I'm scared that I'll never... What would happen if I just... ran out of creativity, Fiona? What if I can't ever finish a painting again? Oh God, I've chosen the wrong line of work. Oh darling, no, no. I just think you work too hard. I worry about you all the time, you know. Don't. Well darling, I do. You should work less and play more. When was the last time you had a boyfriend? God, don't remind me. That's a depressing thought. Well, there you are. Live. Enjoy your youth. It goes by too quickly as it is. Yeah, you'd know, wouldn't you? Ooh, that's uncalled for. That's downright mean, April. I'm in a mind to kick your ass for that one, and I've won tougher fights, believe me. <laughs> Where's everybody this morning? Mickey's tied up in the basement. Mind you, she's not literally tied up, of course. Although that is a tempting thought. 
Are you getting into your sexual fantasies here, Fiona? Because it's a little too early in the morning for that, don't you think? Sorry, I just can't help myself. Anyway, the plumbing is... You probably noticed when you took a shower, yeah? There's no hot water. So Mickey's working on that. Getting knee-deep in putrid canal water is her job. Thank God. What about Charlie? He up yet? No, he's still sleeping, and Emma just went to bed. I saw her come in when I was making breakfast. Do you know who she's seeing now? I don't know. Some guy? Those lads I see her with, darling. She's too good for those assholes. I wish she'd find herself a man who'd treat her right for once. She hasn't had much luck with love, no? She's a magnet for creeps, and she's so pretty. They prey on her, you know, bastards. I've tried to talk to her about it, but Emma's impulsive. She doesn't listen. She's just as headstrong as you and me, darling, but I'm sure she'll be all right. She's smart and resourceful, and not afraid to speak up for herself. Shouldn't you be outside enjoying the good weather? You joking? Bollocks to that. I'll stay inside until September, thank you very much. It's too bloody hot. Can I ask you a few questions? Why, certainly, darling. About what? Tell me about Emma. Emma? Why, she's your best friend, darling. I don't know what to tell you that you don't already know. You girls are so close. That's true. The day we met, we clicked instantly. It was strange, but cool. Like me and Mickey, then? Except for the sex, of course. That's a pretty big except for Fiona. Oh, I guess so. She's the crazy one, Emma is. Not crazy as in mad as a hatter, but crazy in a good way. Fun to be around. Emma's always been a little weird. Exactly, darling. She's a flirt, too, and the boys seem to drop like flies at her feet. No wonder. She's a real looker, I don't have to tell you. I'm sure she could have been a model if she'd wanted. But she's an artist, and a good one, too. I really think she'll be a successful artist. Her sculptures are getting a lot of attention. Anything else you can tell me about Emma? She ought to be a little more careful sometimes. She's a flirt. And although she doesn't mean any harm, some lads don't take too well to being teased and rejected. You should tell her that, though, being her best friend and all. I have told her. She won't listen. No. She does worry me a little, but she's a big girl and she can take care of herself. I'm certainly happy to have her living here. Next to you and Charlie, she's my favorite tenant. What did you think of me when we first met? That's a peculiar question, isn't it? I thought you were quite lovely. I still do, darling. Do you remember the day I arrived? Of course, darling. It wasn't that long ago, and I'm not senile quite yet. It was in May, wasn't it? Charlie referred you to me, and you were quite at a loss. First day in the city, wasn't it? I remember. You looked like a lost puppy. Puppy? Me? When I saw you lugging that suitcase across the bridge, my heart went out to you. I'm glad you came here. You could have been lost anywhere else. How long have you known Charlie? Oh, he's one of our oldest tenants. It's close to three years, I believe, since he moved in. Charlie is always in a good mood, and he's such a gentleman. I agree. He's an actual, genuine gentleman. And you don't see a lot of gentlemen these days, trust me. You have a very good friend in him, darling. Perhaps even more than a friend. What do you mean, more than a friend? Not for me to say, darling. If you don't realize it yet, you will. What's up with Zach Lee? Zach? I think we both feel the same way about him, darling. He's not actually a bastard. If he was, I'd have had him out of here in an instant. But he is an ass, and a stuck-up, pompous, arrogant wanker. My thoughts, exactly. Aside from that wanker bit. 
Still, he pays his rent on time and he doesn't make a lot of noise. He keeps to himself. And most importantly, he's shit scared of me. So I can't just kick him out. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Fiona. Me? Why? There's not much to say, darling. I love my job, I love Venice, and I love being with Mickey. I'm a happy girl. Sure, sometimes I wish I could go back to England to see my family, but that's water under the bridge, so to speak. I'm very happy with myself and my life here in Newport. How long have you and Mickey been together? Mickey and I have been together since I was 19. She was in her late 30s then. The older, wiser, worldly woman. I found her sweet and charming and intriguing. When I finally realized she was neither of those things, it was too late. <laughs> I was in love. She stole me away from my dreary British inner city life, and she brought me here. She was no knight in shining armor, that's for sure. But she knew how to treat me like a woman. You guys make a great couple. You think so, darling? Yes, I guess we do. And the sex is amazing. You never get tired of talking about your sex life, do you? Never. And if I ever do, please shoot me. Can you tell me something about the border house? That's one of my favorite topics, darling. What precisely do you want to know? What made you decide to run a boarding house? That's a long story. One of the reasons Mickey and I got together was that we shared a passion for the classic English country inns. You know, quaint, weathered buildings, funny old ladies, and oddly suggestive names like the Lazy Cock. <laughs> so why come here to the big city? To America? We wanted to create a place with a similar atmosphere and hospitality here in Newport. Like a safe house for people like you and I to call home, if only for a short while. So we discussed different options for a few months, and then we decided we wanted to start a boarding house for young, penniless students and artists. You decided you wanted to do that here in Venice? We knew that Venice was the place for us long before we came here, but the hard part was finding a building cheap enough. And this building was available? Not at first. Like most of the buildings in Venice, this one used to be a factory. But when we first looked at it, a local company was planning to turn it into a bar and nightclub. It was so perfect for our purposes, though, that we appealed to the Venice Borough Council. And after outlining our plans, they gave us the go-ahead at a reduced price, provided we kept our promises regarding our tenants. What inspired the name Border House? That came quite naturally when we saw the place. It's on the border between two worlds, isn't it? Between Venice and the city itself. And at the same time, I also believe we're on the border between two more abstract worlds. Between art and spirit on the one hand, and science and technology on the other. That's very poetic, Fiona. Yes, I've practiced. I may be an inner city girl, but I can philosophize and bullshit with the best of them. Do you and Mickey own the place together? We own it together, yes. And we've shared the responsibilities between us. Mickey takes care of the maintenance of the building, and I busy myself with the administrative tasks. 